Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I just got one of those, hey buddy, projects. Hey buddy, could you help me out with this? And I'm gonna say that, yeah, because I'm a nice guy, I can help you out with it. Let me show you what I've agreed to make. I think it's pretty neat. And we'll go about making it in the most complicated and time consuming way possible. So here is the part that I've been asked to make by a very good friend of mine who searched for this part, could not find it as an individual component, and even if he could have bought it, he didn't want one made out of the same material that broke on him originally. Now what this is, it's a bracket that bolts to the front of a hydraulic valve body, holds the lever that you operate manually, and this one, as you can see, it's cracked. So what I'm going to do, or what we're going to do, because I'm going to bring you with me, is we are going to cut us a chunk out of this H13. We're going to go to the saw, cut a chunk, go to the shaper, square it up. Then we'll meet up at the milling machine and uh, I'll explain the rest of the process as we go along. We also got to go to the lathe. We're going to use several machines to make a part as close to looking like this as we can, but hopefully stronger in the end. So I'm all set up in the saw here. H13 is one of those tool steels that got a good, decent ductility. Its machinability is pretty decent as well. It's also weldable. So there's our workpiece. This is the piece of drop that I'm not going to use right now, but I make sure before I put it away that it's labeled. It's always helpful to know, otherwise everything just becomes mystery steel, and I just use a simple paint marker. Works really well. So there is a lot of ways that I've thought about to make this part, and I'm just going to show you the way that I've decided on. Not the only way, maybe not the best way or the fastest way, but just a way. We're going to use the shaper to square this block up because we can. I haven't used this machine on camera in a while. So that's what we're going to do. Square up our chunk in the shaper. So let me explain to you what I'm going to do on the shaper here super quick. What my plans are is to get this block to size, both in its major outside dimension and its thickness. Major outside thickness, what is that? We're going to get it to size on this machine because it's a good machine to do that with. I've got two reference sides here, sides that I've chose to use as references because they are nice and square. One of those sides gets put down against my parallels, the other side gets put, put against the fixed jaw device, and then I can manipulate this thing around and get this block nice and square. Once it is, I'll change its orientation, lay it flat, and machine it to thickness. Does that make sense? So the part that we're mimicking here we're going to work it in this orientation here is just a little bit longer than it is wide. So we are just over two inches, two inches, 20 thousandths or 51.5 mil. And its length is basically two and eighth, uh, 2.135 or 54.2 mil. 
what is its thickness? It is 19 mil, so it's three quarters of an inch in uh, thickness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch off, clean the surface up, get a measurement, work down to our width, then we will stand it up on its end, work it down to its length, then we'll lay it down in the vise and work it to its thickness. We're using our Williams number 42 universal holder, which is absolutely amazing and hard to find for a shaper, for a planer. They're awesome with a piece of half inch Rex 95, I believe, high speed steel. So let's work down our, our what is that, the width. Yep, work down the width and we'll do the rest of the operations. slow this thing down just a little bit. That's more like it. So 20 thousandths and we'll do 20 20. So 20 thousand step, 20 thousand step over just to clean this thing up. Two point one five six. So we got one hundred and thirty-six thousandths to remove, basically one hundred thirty-four. We'll pull off fifty. We're going to do a ten thousand step over because of that depth of cut. I don't get too carried away. I'm not held in the vise super well. Same thing again. So last cut, I need to remove 34 thousandths. I'm gonna put just a little oil on that. We'll give this a better finish, not that it matters, but. Probably just smoke up the shop, to be honest. Now we got two sides that are parallel and one side that's square. I'm going to flip it up long ways and work this part to length. So I've worked this part to width. Now I need to work it to length. Let me show you a super quick way. 
if you have a pair of digital calipers to figure out how much you got to take off your stock. So we'll just zero on our part, zero, and measure our piece. So we need to pull off that much, 0.475, so 475 thousandths, basically 12 mil. So let's set this up in the vise, and I'm going to buzz that off real quick. So I've got this block worked down on all of the edges around the perimeter of this thing. It's all the size. Now I've got to get it to thickness. And the problem is that this block, it was saw cut on all edges and the, the two main faces on it are not parallel or, or 90 degrees perpendicular to the sides. So what I need to do is set this in the vise and use a square off of the ways of the vise to get true to an edge. Then I can surface one side, then I can flip it onto a set of parallels and finish plane this thing or shape this thing to its finished thickness. I think that's good. Let me check. It's good enough. Sure yep, thank you, love. So there's our surface finish. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Good thing about a shaper is usually you get good surface finishes and the tooling is cheap. I just need to deburr these edges and then we'll go on to the next thing. Check out those nice purple gold chips. We sped up a little bit and they got a little, little more purple as I sped the feed up, but, or the stroke up. Well, looks good. So I've got my piece held in the vise here. I know everybody already knows what transfer punches are, but I'm gonna show you just in case you don't. Now this is a full set, imperial, standard sized uh, transfer punches. And basically they're a punch that has been machined on the end. They're hardened with a nice little, uh, little center. So you can find the one that fits the hole size that you're trying to transfer, put it in there and give it a little whack, and it will center punch your hole and I can just go around all four of these and get right where they need to be. And I made a large one. Just put it in the lay, spun just the slightest little point on it. And that will go down in there and find the hole for the center. And there we go. Let me get you a shot of it. So hopefully all my little center marks show up there. And for the precision of something like this, I mean, a transfer punch is more than accurate enough for the needs here. So there we go, all of our holes are center punched. 
and now I can go open those up. So with the transfer punches, I just got a hole started, so I'm gonna make them a little deeper uh, with just a regular old center punch. That way my drill starts nice and true. The center hole is gonna be done over on the lathe, so we gotta get set up in the fore jaw for that. Oh, oh man, I got it. I stole it from you. Well, that's a good one. You want it? Yeah, pretty hot. The cord does match the truck. She does. That's why you like her so much. Uh, maybe. She, she, she matches the truck and maybe she the just... Light, maybe the light ball bar will fit on her. Yeah. She lights the world. She's a, she's a sweetie. She just needs a lot of attention. That's what she needs. Yeah. A little needy there, but that's okay. There are worse problems Yeah. So we got a shop full of visitors today. We got Stan, from, hey guys. Uh, Shandon uh, HKW Close YouTube. Enough. Is that what it is? What is it? I don't look at the name. I just look at the face. <laughs> it's Shandon HKW. Yeah. But like I said, Check him out. Enough. Yeah. And then we got Al. We've got Jeff, Jeff and, Gabe. and Gabe. They're all down from uh, Stan's out of out of uh, California. He's down this way doing some doing some work and just decided that he would. You know, stop by the shop and see what was going on. Yeah, it's good to come by to Steve Summers Squirrel Run. Yeah, that's what the sign says. That's yep. what it says. So I think we, we've just officially uh, renamed your channel. Yeah, the Squirrel Run. The Squirrel Run. What? Hey guys, welcome to the Squirrel Run. Let's go see what Steve's up to <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's getting uh, something squirrely probably. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We were here. We got to admire his truck. I got to hear it. First hand, mm -hmm. sounds great. Got to poke around and look at the machine. You know, I was I was pretty torn between which build I liked better, between the truck or the milling machine, you know? Yeah. Yeah, some people like the shop, shop build. Some people like the mill. A lot of people love to do all bandsaw. I, I and like it all, and I do a bunch, I do whatever. I don't shoot videos just for the sake of shooting videos. I got to be doing it already Yeah. as content. I'm not going to mill a part that I don't need. Yeah. Do something that's not needed just for content. Yeah. 
So uh, no, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind coming out. I I, en I enjoyed listening to your truck. Uh, like I say, firsthand. I heard it on video, but it sounded yeah. great. sounded great in person. Yeah, it really sounds great. Yeah, I like the way the exhaust turned out on it. It mm -hmm. does sound good. And you live in a beautiful part of the country. Yeah, yeah, it's nice out here. Mm -hmm. Real peaceful. That's what I, the way I like it. Well, that creek running all the time, just just a nice ambient noise. Yeah. Sounds great. Very little traffic. Just kind of a nice place to kick well, back and relax. We were in downtown Louisville last night. I was kind of freaking out. I was center of the concrete jungle. Yep. Constant. Their ambient noise is cars yeah. and horns and yeah. sirens and helicopters, and that's all you hear. Yeah. And it, I, I feel closed in in there, so it was good to get out. I was there for a little while. It was good to get away from it. Yeah, out here it's just wildlife, really. Wildlife, you hear Crickets the wind. Crickets yep. I'll listen to that yep. all, all day and all night. Yep, just uh, nature's music, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a bit really nice out here. Wouldn't ha I wouldn't have it any other way. Yep. So what do you do on your channel? Everything. I mean, if I'm working on the shop, I'm going to take you along for the ride. If I'm rebuilding a machine, I'll take you along for the ride. If i got parts to build, I'll take you along. If I'm working on my truck, I'll take you along. So it's, uh, you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Me. So go check out Stan over at... Uh, just look up Barzy Industrial. Yeah. I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, Summer Bash is coming up. Mm -hmm. We haven't even talked about it. You know what I need? What do you need? I need a motto. Okay. Every summer bash starts off with a motto. It does. You know, we one year we did when hell freezes over. Next year we did meet your maker. We did uh, when the going gets tough, the tough go to the bar. Yeah. We did <laughs> uh, a jack of all trades with the Jack Daniels yep. logo. Uh, I like and, that. And so far this year we don't have a motto yet. So Just come up with a motto. Leave it down in the comments. I'd love to hear a good motto, but I'll tell you. I have to love it instantly. Yeah. When I read it, it just has to just, it, growing on me is not yeah. going to work. Yeah. I, I have to love it right away. So that's a good job. Come up with a motto for the upcoming Bar Z Summer Bash. Tell you what, uh, the winner, I'll ship out a nice supply of anchor lube to them. If you come up with a winner, that's a good. I'll give them a nice, uh, nice batch of anchor lube, uh, cutting lubricant, if they're chosen to. Uh, represent the Barzy Summer Bash Yeah, this that's year. a good prize. That's good stuff. So. Yeah. How are you fixed on it? I've still got quite a bit. Okay. I've got, I, I can uh, send some out if you yeah. need it. You've, me, you've hooked me, me up a couple times. So. Okay, just let me know if you need any more. Yeah. I'll, I'll, send, I'll be happy to send it over. Well, I'm glad that you stopped by, Stan. Oh, I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank yeah, you. I've seen your shop. You. Now you've seen mine. You have. You haven't seen it since I added on, no. though. You no. haven't seen the new Monarch. No, but I will, hopefully. Oh, all right. Hopefully you can get out this yeah. year. Yeah, I'd love to. It was, it was a good time. I, I appreciated you going to the effort to make the trip. It's a long trip for I me. understand. I, I get it. And I get people that come from all over, and I'm, it still floors me yeah. that people go to that much trouble to come out and yeah. see us. Well, they enjoy seeing the YouTube creators and just getting in that machinist community. It, it, it's a tight-knit community, and I, I mean, I understand. They're all great guys. Yes. They're all It's great hard guys. to find a better crew. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get to spend much time with you when you came out. No. And, you know, I, after the bash, I have regrets. Yeah. I, I, don't, get but to, you know, I don't get to spend time with anyone. Yeah. Even yeah. You're, my wife you're hosting. So. I know. Even my wife forgot what I looked like. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, maybe I, maybe this year I'll get out. I'd love to. So we'll see. Yeah. You and, you and Elizabeth, come on yep. up. It's a good time. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed my time there. What was it? 2000 and... Uh, what year did I go? Well, what year was it? 2018 18. or 19? 18 or 19? 19 was Hell Freezes Over. We had Finner and Mr. Pete. Yeah, I was, was there. Mr. Pete yeah. There? yeah, you were there yeah, for Hell Yeah, so 19, over. yeah. Yeah, we had all the little devils. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got them. Yeah, I've got yeah. the lanyards and the buttons. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah you, that's, that's where you came. So awesome. And COVID hit us a little bit, not yeah. bad. You know, we, the first year we kind of had a little lull, but we ramped right back up yeah. after that. Yeah, people were eager to get back out and start mingling again. After so. we figured out it was just another version of the yeah. flu and yeah. people yeah. get sick. Yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. Well, Stan, I definitely appreciate you stopping by. Okay, so. I, I absolutely loved it. 
come up with a name for the Barzi Summer Bash upcoming, get you some anchor lube, okay. some good stuff. Uh, let's go see what Steve's got up his sleeve for this video. All right, cut. So what I want to do is bore out a hole in the center of this uh, part that I've already center punched. So to locate or to get that center punch on the axis of rotation of the lathe, there's a few ways to do this. But right now I've got, uh, this is a transfer punch held in the uh, tailstock of the lathe. I'm going to run that in and I'll just hold it out here and I'll adjust till I get close. And then I'll seat that center punch or this uh, transfer punch into that center punch and use an indicator off of it. You'll see what I'm doing once I get uh, once I get going here. So you could get that centered up better by eye. I mean, you can get real close by eye. Then you can come in with this and fine tune it. Got it relatively close now. I'm going to bring this transfer punch in and seat it in to that center punch, just like that. Lock it down. Now I'm going to take a small indicator and set off this, and I can use the deflection to dial in my center. So I'm just using a little uh, best test thousands indicator, and I'm just going to try to get it as close as I can up there towards the end of that uh, transfer punch and zero it. Now when I rotate this, it gives me a, you know, it's way off right now. But we'll get closer here shortly. It gives me a reading of how far off the center of rotation I am. I'd say that's good enough.
So there we go. I just step drilled it out till I got close to my final size, used a boring bar, cleaned it up. And now, pull this out and take it over to the mill. Oh, look what I found. Oh, you don't want that, do you? Oh, good, good. Give it to me. Oh. So I'm over here in the milling machine getting ready to buzz some material off of the piece that we're making. Now I'm doing things a little different than what they did from the factory. Obviously this one was cast. You can see they've got this circular section here. And I think that they put that in there for support for these two ears that the handle attaches to. I don't, it doesn't serve any purpose other than, other than support, uh, looking at the drawing of how this thing is used. So what I've decided to do because we're making out of a superior material is skip that. We will have that feature in, but we're going about it in a different way than what they did. So I'm gonna machine all of this material down to the thickness of our original part here, minus this small section in the back here, which will turn into the ears, lugs, whatever. And then at the end, I will be silver soldering in the round section just to make it look like it did originally. I'll silver solder this in to the thin edge and round to help support the ears and then and I'll just machine the angle on it and we'll be done. So it'll make sense if it doesn't once we get rocking along here.
so there's our piece off the mill. It actually looks really good. It's not finished. Don't have the slot cut in it yet. And then here is the second part to it. And I'm going to silver solder these together. It'll get slotted. And then I'll taper it. And it will look exactly like the original. At least I hope that it does. Now, the reason why I did this in two, I don't know if I mentioned the reason why I did this in two pieces is because it's a lot quicker for me to turn the ring like this and silver solder it on than it is for me to set up the rotary table, work back and forth. In fact, this would not even have to been made like this at all. I'm doing this for exercise and just machining for fun. So let's silver solder this together. And then I'll do the slot. Angle, this thing will be done. Well, I still got to drill for the pin. You get it. It'll be done. So I'm not the world's best at silver soldering, but I'd like to share with you a few little things that I've picked up just from practice and from others who are better at silver soldering than me. And one of those is make sure both of your parts, your mating parts, are covered in flux. Wherever you want the solder to flow, put flux in that area. Or else, if you just flux one part, that's where your solder will stick. And... Uh, you know, you just won't have any luck. Also, leave a little space like this part that I made here. It's not a super tight fit. It's a little bit of space between the parts where the solder can wick into and get a, a really good bond. Also, before you even flux your parts at all, make sure that they're really clean. Like I wiped everything off with carburetor cleaner and even took a small piece of Brillo or, or uh, Scotch-Brite and polished the silver solder itself. It sits around in drawers and stuff and you touch it with your hands and the oils from your hands get on it and it just seems to flow so much better if it's if it's good and clean before you start. So a lot of these little things you know, all together make a good soldering job. I'm using the velocity of the flame here to kind of push the solder along the joint as it wicks in. So there's just nothing beats practice. You know, but those are just a few little things that I've picked up along the way make the majority of my soldering jobs successful. Oh, one more thing, that, uh, or a couple more things actually. Make sure to use flux, soldering flux that's rated for the heat range that you're going to be working in. It's so easy to overheat your part and burn your flux away and then it won't, your uh, solder won't flow at all. So I like to test my part by just touching it with the solder and to, you know, uh, being easy with the flame just until the solder starts melting and then try to regulate that heat back a bit. It still doesn't keep me from overheating parts, but you know, I'm more successful that way. Also get you a block to do your soldering on, something that's non-conductive. Uh, this is an old block out of an oven that, uh, you know, if you're soldering on a metal tabletop, it makes things even, even tougher. So get yourself something to isolate your part uh, and uh, you'll find that it'll help. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Is it your imagination or is it protruding a little bit above the bottom? The solder might be just a little, but that's okay.
so check that out. Two operations left. Got to radius all the corners on the piece that I made. Make it look not so square, more factory-ish. And also have to put an angle on the round section there. So, and deburr all of the edges, but close. So let me show you how I'm gonna put the angle on this piece. Really happy with the way this is turning out. Really happy. So let me show you how I'm gonna put the angle on there, then we'll do that. Deburr this thing, radius the corners, that's it. So because that angle there has nothing to do with anything really other than clearance, uh, what I did, took my existing part, just got it in the in the sign vise here, on the surface plate that is relatively level. I checked it. A, I took a uh, just a digital level, set it in there, adjusted till we basically, depending on how you jiggle this thing, got zero, and that is going to be good enough to put that same angle on our new piece. So that's it. And I'm going to go over to the grinder, buzz that on there, then I'll take you over to the belt sander. We'll clean up this thing and make it look just as pretty as anything you've ever seen in your life. So all I'm gonna do is grind this down to I just start brushing the top of the lugs there because that's what has been done on the factory one. Boom. The angle is done. So if you don't mind, clean this mess up while I you know, put radiuses on these corners and stuff. It'll help me out. Yeah, looks good. So I don't know if I ever mentioned it or not. But a really good source for round quality files is chainsaw sharpening files. You can usually get them at a reasonable price. And they're great. You can get them all, all kinds of different sizes. They're great for deburring and cleaning up sharp edges. Elizabeth has got the warmest spot in the house. Core's down here chewing on stick.
So this is almost the last step. Well, it is the last step for this video, and that's just radiusing all the corners. I'm doing that on the old shop made belt sander. I've watched a lot of videos where you get to the grinding and the polishing section of some factory tour where they make knives or something that ha takes handwork to in the final finishing. And the guy that's doing the tour always comments on how hard it is to get good quality people who can get a very good job grinding and polishing stuff by hand. It's kind of an art, really, that uh, I, I definitely appreciate. It's so easy to take off way too much material on a belt sander because they are capable of removing a lot of material quick. And getting all four corners to, a, to the point to where they pass the OI meter, I just go slow, usually. That's how I make it work. But... You see those guys that are trained in knife grinding, and man, they're getting after it and doing just a beautiful job. This part's coming out good. I'm really happy with it. So check that out. Finished. As finished as it's going to be. Now, I could polish this up and make it look like a jewel, but there's just no, no reason at all for that. Um, so I'm going to call it here and consider that done. It looks pretty good. Got you know, every bit the original look, size, all that stuff. Plus, we're going to be a lot stronger than this original zinc, alloy, pop metal, whatever this was cast out of. This should hold up to years of operator abuse. I'm not for sure, but this may kind of come off of a log splitter, you know, where the monkey meets the machine. And that uh, always gets a lot of abuse. So, this being made out of a solid chunk of steel minus this thing here you know, the ears and stuff, should last and last and last. So get that little bit of spray paint on that and it will look, it will look just like a factory piece except for, in my opinion, it's better. Now obviously there's a lot of ways that a guy can go, or gal, could go about making this. I chose to do it in two pieces, simply because I didn't want to stand at the rotary table and try to, you know, get in that sharp corner there. Two pieces made sense to me and it wasn't a big deal at all to silver solder that in. So, there we go. Actually, I think that that piece is just support for those ears anyway. So, this being made out of uh, quality steel, it should be perfectly good. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Let me throw it? Okay, I will. You did it! Good girl! Alright guys, that's it this week. Big thanks to Stan for coming down and paying the shop a visit. I'm definitely honored to have him, his uh, co-workers, his buddies in the shop, and my good friend Al. And you know what happens when Al comes down, at least a lot of you. So I've got some stuff to share with you, some exciting stuff in the future. So look forward to that as well. Now, if you could, please help me and Stan out and choose, come up with something, a name, a slogan for the 2023 Bar Z Summer Bash. I mean, how cool would that be to be the person who come up with the slogan for the bash and get you some anchor lube from, from the man Stan himself. So, little part that I made come out great. Couldn't be happier with that. Uh, I'm already given it to my friend, so he was blown away. It wasn't a little more than what he was expecting. And that's, that's always nice. So, that's it, thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So, that's it, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Come on, Cora, let's go to the house.